This isn't your normal FPS guide that just talks about some in-game settings and tells you to update Windows. No, we will be going through and talking about BIOS settings, registry edits, forbidden tricks, and much more. As well as this, I will actually be explaining what everything does, unlike some guides that just tell you to do stuff with no explanation. So let's get started. The first thing I suggest you do is run a benchmark test using this map made by Angel, which I have linked in the description. Once you finish running the benchmark, it will open up your console and give you some values in regards to your average FPS and your 1% lows. Mine are currently an average of 551 with lows of 221. Make sure to make a note of these values so that you can see how much your FPS has increased by by the end of the guide. The first thing I will go over is your in-game settings. You want to press escape, then go to settings, then to video. Make sure here the highest frame rate possible is set for your monitor. Now onto the advanced settings. Starting from the very top, always make sure to have boost player contrast on enabled, as it does help with the enemy visibility, especially at longer distances. Make sure the V-Sync is turned off, as this just caps your FPS, which we do not want as it increases your latency. Moving on to the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, I suggest that everyone who wants the most FPS out of their system, whilst reducing their latency, selects this on enabled. If you are playing on a very high-end system like me, you can put this on Enabled Plus Boost, which will reduce your FPS but improve your latency. Make sure to also drag the FPS sliders to 1000, as we want our FPS to be uncapped. Moving on to anti-aliasing, for the people who do not know what this basically does, it smooths out the jagged edges on your screen, which makes the game look amazing, but by making the game look amazing, it also reduces your FPS and increases your latency. This setting, if you are playing on a stretched resolution, is a must because the game looks disgusting. Otherwise, if you are playing on 1920 by 1080 I personally use 2x MSSA, but for the best latency and performance, you can either turn this off or put it on CMA2. For the global shadow quality, I suggest you have this on low. As you can see on your screen, it just makes the shadows more pixelated, which means they are bigger to see, and this will also substantially increase your FPS. For dynamic shadows, never ever turn this on sun only, as you won't be able to see player shadows caused by different light sources. You will only be able to see shadows casted by the sun. For texture detail, if you are playing on a low-end system, then turning this off will improve FPS. But if you are on a high-end PC and want your skins to look better, you can keep this on high. The texture filtering mode is meant to smooth out existing textures and give them a more detailed dark look, which really doesn't impact your FPS. However, the lowest mode gives you a more bland look which allows the enemies to pop out more, so set this to bilinear. Now, shader quality is one of those settings that makes quite the difference. If you want the best FPS, then have this on low, which will reduce the quality of objects in the map and also help with the clutter. If you are playing on a very high-end system, you can keep this on high if you really wanted to, but for the best FPS and competitive advantage, low is the way. For particle details, set this to low as it doesn't really impact your visibility through monotovs, but it does increase your FPS. For ambient occlusion, make sure to have this disabled as it's just a feature that casts more shadows in some places of the map. Before, this was actually a very useful feature because it allowed you to see the shadows of enemies on walls, but now it doesn't make a difference. Make sure to put HDR on performance as all this does is just manage the difference in contrast around the map. And lastly, if you are on a very, very low end system and you do not care about the visual appearance of your game, then you can set Fidelity FX Super Resolution to performance. This will give you around 30 to 100 FPS more depending on your system. But in general, you want this one disabled because the game looks pretty shit. After doing all of this, I ran the benchmark tests again and my average FPS had increased by about 150 and my 1% lows by 40 FPS. The next part of this video will be about some console commands. Rate 1 million will increase the bandwidth of your network, allowing more data to flow from the server to your computer, making the game feel way more responsive. Only change this to 1 million if you have extremely good internet or a LAN cable. SND underscore mixerhead 0.001 will reduce the delay before you hear any sounds in game. This is important as it allows to hear the steps of enemies and different noises way faster. The rest of the commands will not affect your competitive advantage, but they could improve your gameplay. This gamma console command, when changed to 2.5, makes your game look more like CSGO. The max you can set this to is 3, and the default value is 2 if you prefer the normal look of CS2. CO underscore crosshair sniper width will change the width of your sniper's crosshair. The default value for this is 1 and on your screen is the different values for 1, 3 and 5. Moving on to the next part of this video which is to do with your drivers and your NVIDIA settings. Obviously make sure your drivers are all up to date and that you are running the latest Windows update. 
The reason being is that over the past few months, Windows 11 has had some issues with utilizing Ryzen CPUs and lately most of these issues have been fixed. If you do also play on a Ryzen or an Intel CPU, something very important you should do is use the latest chipset drivers for your processor. I have left links in the description, but you basically just want to download the software for your CPU, which will then scan your system and give you the latest drivers to update your processors to. If you do also have a NVIDIA graphics card, you'll want to tweak your 3D settings as they can sometimes override your in-game settings, which we do not want. Just copy the settings off of my screen. If you do want more of an explanation as to what each one does, you can just hover over them and NVIDIA provides you with an explanation at the bottom. In terms of Radeon graphics cards, you just want to set everything on off or on low as that's basically what we've done with the NVIDIA settings. Now let's move on to the actual fun part, the Windows and system optimization. But before that, also make sure to subscribe if you like this type of content. I have made a link to a Google Drive folder with steps to follow for this optimization. I also want to give credit to Corvi Tech, whose tips I have used to help make this guide. With every step of the guide, there are included detailed explanations in the form of text documents about what everything does. So I'll be showing you how to apply all the settings and explain what most of them do. After downloading the folder, make sure to unzip it. And the first step is to create a restore point. Just in case things do not go as planned, you'll be able to revert back to your Windows settings. To do this, click on the first step, then on the shortcut, select your main driver, click configure, then turn on system protection and allocate 20 gigabytes of memory. Click OK, then name it B4 Tweaks. Moving on to the second step, power plans. Now before you apply anything, let's just check what power plans you are already running. Search in Windows, choose power plan, then click it. As you can see, I'm currently running the balanced version, but when I click on additional options, I also have ultimate performance mode, which is what I'm going to select. If you already have an ultimate performance mode on your system, you can just skip this step. But if you don't, you can open up the folder, right click on this bat file and run it as an administrator. Then after that, click on the good power plan folder and run the call v pow. Then open up the change power plan window again and it should be there for you to enable. Moving on to the third step, which is Windows settings. Now these are just some simple settings. The first one is display. And here you just want to make sure you're running your screen's maximum refresh rate. On notifications, I personally like to have mine set on on, but a lot of people don't. And they can also impact FPS, especially if you get some notifications whilst you're in game. So you want to just go ahead and turn them all off, or you can go through and select the ones which you do not like. Wait, is that a notification from Skins Monkey? With Skins Monkey, you can trade your skins quick and easy for better prices than the Steam Market. You also get up to $5 for free by using code MEDIA and a 35% bonus for any cash deposits. Kaching, it's super simple to use. Pick the skins you don't want, pick the skins you do want, and trade. And if you're poor like me, you can enter the daily, weekly, and monthly giveaways to potentially win yourself some skins. And guys, if you have any problems, just ask the 24-7 support team for some help, and they'll definitely give you some. Are you serious right now, bro? Thank you, Skins Monkey, for sponsoring this video. For number three, the privacy, you want to turn off everything in general, inking and typing, and for diagnostics and feedback, make sure you're only sending back the required diagnostics data. For number four, the mouse, you want to open this up, then go to additional mouse settings, click on pointer options, and turn off enhanced pointer precision. If you have this on, this will not replicate the true movements of your mouse in relation to your screen. For number five, you want to turn game mode on, and you can also go into graphic settings and add your CS2 execute file, which should be in the directory on your screen. After you have selected it, you can choose the GPU preference and set this to highest GPU performance. Number six is a registry edit that just basically makes your GPU more active to reduce the power related latency you have when it wakes up. And the last part from this folder is the appearance and performance of Windows. You want to search up appearance and then you should be able to click on it. You want to uncheck all the settings except for the ones that I have on my screen or the ones that you personally like. Number three, for this step, the only thing I have to say is to not use this on laptops or on PC rigs that have bad cooling as this gets rid of some of your power saving options. Basically, what all of these registry edits do is stop the system from putting power saving on certain things. My best advice is to read the documentation, as if I sat here and explained everything to you, it will take a very long time. For number four, what you have to do is just pick one of these registry edits that relates to your system. You only have to run one file. They all do the same thing, but with different values. If you're running on a lower end system, then running the 26 hex file should be good enough for you. And if you're running on a higher end PC, then run the 2A file. 
And the last part of this section of the video is some registry tweaks. There is a document here again explaining what each and every one of these tweaks does and how it improves your performance. Before we go into the next segment of the video, make sure to run the FPS benchmark again just so that you can see by how much it has improved. For me, my average FPS has increased again by about 20 points, which isn't a lot, but don't forget I am on a high-end system. If you are playing on a low-end system, you can expect to see a much higher increase. Now let's talk about some forbidden tricks. You need to understand that CS2 is a CPU heavy game. So if you're not getting enough FPS even after following all the steps, the next best thing for you to do is to adjust BIOS settings. Now I don't have a guide for this because everyone's BIOS and PC build is different. However, I do have some tips that work across all systems. The first one being enabling XMP or XPO. XMP is basically an overclocking profile for your RAM that optimizes it for Intel CPUs. XPO is the same thing but for Ryzen. This will help your latency in game as you're able to push more performance from your RAM. As well as this, if you are running on an older CPU, you can try disabling multi-threaded sampling, also known as hyper-threading on Intel systems and SMT on Ryzen. What this basically does is it makes your individual cores work more instead of utilizing them all at once. If you used to play Rust a few years ago, this was actually a very popular FPS trick. If you're running on a higher end graphics card, there is a setting in your BIOS called NVIDIA Resizable Bar. This setting allows your system to utilize the graphics card memory much more. The AMD version of this is called Smart Access Memory and some motherboards call it Clever Access Memory as well. After you have optimized your BIOS and you're still not getting enough FPS, then there's only two options left for you. The first is to overclock your CPU, which I won't teach you how to do because it's different for every system and because I have no clue how you do it. But if you do decide to overclock it, it can push out at least another 20 FPS depending on your CPU. And the second option is just buying a new CPU. I personally use the Ryzen 7 9 8000X3D. If you guys found this useful, make sure to subscribe and also drop a comment if you have any other tips.